Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Over the past few years, we've been very focused on LEDs and LED projects. Other type of projects have kind of fallen behind on the channel. And this video is about an announcing a new project. While I've started projects in the past and not finished some, I guess we all know how that is. It's no reason not to keep moving forwards. So this video will introduce my idea behind project energy, as is the code name for now. Right, so the project is called Project Energy because it focuses mainly on that, becoming more flexible with energy. And when I say energy, in this case, I really mean power or electricity. In a nutshell, if you don't want to watch the whole video, I'm going to be building a home battery system and want to take you guys along on the journey. But let's dig a little bit deeper and let me tell you a little bit about the why, how and reasoning behind it and why now. First off, this has of course been sparked by the rising energy prices here in Europe. I live in the Netherlands and the current price for power has easily doubled, if not tripled, versus a few years back. And there is no easy fix for that in sight. There are multiple reasons why this is happening. I don't really want to get into that in this video. The fact of the matter is that this is happening and I don't see it going back to the prices we were used to seeing anytime soon. Now, this home has actually been designed to use a lot of power or electricity. We don't use any other form of energy such as uh, natural gas or uh, wood or anything like that. So we have an air water heat pump, which gives us all our home heating and hot water. This is great because to combat that power usage, we also have 44 solar panels, which are about 12 kilowatt peak in total. This is enough to generally offset most of our energy usage for the whole year. We end up paying a little bit, but, that, but then again, I also have servers running and things like that, <laughs> lots of LEDs. So we just use a lot of power next to using electricity for our heat also. Now, you might say, but you're in the Netherlands. You have a law or a whatever, a, a rule that says you can do soldere. Why build a battery? Well, that is true. This law or rule allows you to deliver energy back to the grid. And when you ask back for it again, we basically pay zero. So one kilowatt of energy out is return consumed one kilowatt later in for that year for zero pay. This is great. We can basically use the grid as a giant battery and we have thankfully done so because we generate most of our energy or electricity during the summer and then again use most of it during the winter. But if you look at that from a technical perspective, it makes no sense at all. We all produce a lot of energy at the same time when the sun is shining and the need is thus low at that point. And then at the moment when that natural resource isn't there, we all want it back. But then, well, we can't really store it. So coal and gas plants need to be powered at those moments anyway, to give us the energy we gave at a moment that there was an abundance of it. And this, I think, highlights the time we're living in. We're in a sort of transition period where concepts such as a high tariff during the day and a low tariff during the night might have been technically logical 10 years ago, but they are not anymore or soon will not be anymore since our sources of power are changing. Lots and lots has become solar and wind, which isn't a resource that is constant or always available like coal, gas, or even nuclear that have been our methods of power for the past, I don't know how many years. And well, that is exactly what Project Energy is about. The current way we get power from our car power companies will soon not exist anymore in my opinion, or at least it shouldn't. Power isn't a resource that is always available in the same amounts, if you want, green power at least, but it's temperamental. Sometimes there is an abundance and sometimes there's too little. And now we're getting to the point how I got here and made my decision. The first reason is that I've always looked at a home battery solution because I think they're cool. But since we had Soldere, it was financially a very bad investment here in the Netherlands. 
Well, they've been threatening of taking this rule or law, whatever, away for a few years now, and I have no doubt that in like one to two years, they'll take it away or slowly transition or transform it in something much less financially attractive than it is now, which I actually kind of support. The current way makes no technical sense whatsoever anymore and is absolutely not sustainable looking at the future. The second is that I was looking into making our power usage a bit cheaper or, well, somehow generating more power so I don't have to pay for what I still end up using. And, well, this focused kind of on the winter. In the summer, I have my solar panels. That works great. But in the winter, eh, solar panels just aren't that effective. So first thing I looked at was windmills. You know, they have these really awesome vertical windmills now, and they're all over AliExpress, and they all hype it up like it's the next thing and better than solar, and there's companies willing to sell you stuff. And, you know, but... Once I really looked into it and looked into the actual wind speeds we'd have to have to make such a, especially the vertical ones, much such a windmill uh, produce any meaningful amounts of power. Well, I did the smart thing and I got a wind meter that I hooked into Home Assistant, which actually works quite well and it's all weather station. And i um, really happy with that project. If you're looking for a weather station to hook into Home Assistant, get one of these. But th this graph basically shows me everything, even in the winter over here, and I'm wearing a jacket because it's really cold, it's freezing outside. Uh, there is just not enough wind to, to do anything meaningful. I quickly abandoned that plan. I guess I ended up with a weather station going down that path, so that's cool, but yeah, it's not going to help me generate more power. Continuing my journey, I found something else. It turns out that next to preset uh, tariffs, or a variable tariff, as we call it here in the Netherlands, so you have a preset where you say, for one year long, your energy prices are this, or you have a dynamic contract which say, we're going to change your energy price four times a year, and then for that those periods, they are set to this. It turns out there's now a new form, which I call a dynamic contract. For those contracts, the price of energy varies per hour, and it scales with supply and demand currently present in the market, or rather the expected supply and expected demand since the price figures for the next 24 hours are published around three o'clock each day for the next whole day. Now that is interesting. As I explained before, there are times in the summer where we have way too much solar for that moment. Well, the same goes for winter. There is lots of wind power available, just maybe not at the time when you need it. And that is exactly where Project Energy comes in. It's basically building a battery to buy power from the grid cheaply when it's cheap and then either use it myself, at times it's expensive, or even better, we can sell surplus energy back to the grid for a profit. Looking at these graphs, you can see that power is currently cheap during the night, I often film at night, when there is less demand and likely plenty of wind power available. But at the beginning of the evening, demand is high, and maybe wind reports are indicating not a lot of wind will be available at that moment these kind of patterns repeat each and every day and mostly throughout the year except that in the summer power is very cheap sometimes they even pay you to take in energy when there's excess they actually pay you uh, during the day but then spikes immediately when the sun goes down but people actually need power to charge their cars coming home from work uh, cooking heating things like that so the price of energy is very dependent on our natural resources and when people need energy, which makes a lot more sense than a set rate or a cheaper tariff during the night, which, as I said, made sense in the past, but with natural resources powering our power generators, I don't think it does anymore. So, while my motives are based on monetary gain, if the financial incentive wasn't there, I likely wouldn't go down this route. This is actually the solution to these issues eventually for, as a whole for everyone, I think. 
things like day and night terrace, and in my opinion, even set terrace, need to go and scaling based on actual availability of natural free resources is the way to go. Store the energy when it's there in abundance and then use that stored energy when it's needed or as mentioned, maybe even sell it back to the grid. And as I said very clearly, I'm doing this to save money. This is actually the way forward to the future, I think. The more wind and solar power generation we build, the more a solution such as this will be needed, either in every home or centrally located projects in your neighborhood by the people of your neighborhood or your energy company, doesn't really matter. In my opinion, the energy demands we humans have isn't decreasing. If anything, it's rapidly increasing. Here in the Netherlands, we are rapidly transitioning from being mostly a gas heated country with, you know, a gas heater in your own home to using electric heat pumps. New homes aren't allowed to be built on with a gas furnace anymore. Combined with the electrification of our cars, that means power demands of a generic household will be many times more than what it currently is. In reality, I don't think we'll be using uh, more energy since a heat pump is more efficient than a gas furnace for the amount of heat it produces, and an electric car is also more efficient per kilometer or mile it's, it's, it drives than it would have been on gasoline. But generally you pump gasoline at a gas station and that isn't seen as a home using energy. But in the future, you'll be uh, or at least most people will be charging their cars at home or at a charging station near their home, so in their neighborhood. And in the Netherlands, we've already seen that our current electrical networks are not designed for this. And there are plenty of spots in the Netherlands where the main power grid is overloaded at times and people's solar generation is just cut down because the grid just can't transport more at that time. Having these batteries locally, either in your home or in your neighborhood, that will deliver back into the grid at times when it's needed. That means the power I, I have in my batteries and I deliver goes to my neighbor or someone else close to me and never sees a main grid line and actually alleviates stress on the grid itself. So although I'm doing this because I think it will save me money in the long run, I don't actually think it will save me money in the short run, but once Soldier is gone and energy prices keep fluctuating like this in a few years or over many years, I think it will have. I think this is the way forward. Often things that make you money don't always attribute to solving a problem or helping the environment, but I believe in this case, it certainly will. And as mentioned, it's likely where most homes and or local solutions will have to go in the future anyway. So that not so much in a nutshell is project energy and the why behind it. In the next videos, we'll explore my current plans and I'd love to get your input on those because although I'm pretty confident around DC power, it's always good to have multiple people look at things. The idea is to document this journey and I might even design some things around it like uh, boards and things you can use. And well, It'll be in a lot of steps trying things out. Some things might fail, but in the end, I hope uh, to build things and, you know, have it all running together with you guys there. Not physically, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so I hope you'll join me on this new adventure. No worries. LED content and the boards and such aren't going anywhere. I still have lots of plan there too. So. Thank you for watching and let me know in the comments what you think of my reasoning or uh, are you just here for the LEDs or any fun tech project is good with you. <laughs> so let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.